It's no secret that World of Warcraft players love to complain, from the valid to the straight up ridiculous, from borrowed power to uproar, with a 10 year old ahead of the curve map rumoured to be coming to the trading post. Maybe you're upset about GDKPs being banned in Season of Discovery, or the most recent noise being February's love slash Valentine themed trading post rewards. But that's another video entirely. You get the idea, players love to complain. However, there seems to be one resounding complaint that most WoW veterans will agree with regarding Retail WoW and its direction. It's just not Warcraft anymore. And what do they mean by that? Well, let's hopefully try and explore that in this video. People will say the clue is in the name, Warcraft. Has Warcraft lost its identity? I started to concentrate my mind on this after hearing the outcry and demand of the whole big hairy sweaty men saga, and references to the art that Chris Metzen did in the Warcraft 2 manual. I saw a post on the WoW forum citing Warcraft was once the heavy metal of MMOs, and I think that's such an accurate statement. It's very clear that World of Warcraft has taken a completely new direction narratively, which is further intensified by the story of Dragonflight. I understand a lot of people, particularly players who have left the game entirely, have been very critical of the expansion's cutscenes and the overall story. I think the touchy-feely side of WoW that so many have a problem with is fine, and by no means should take a backseat or be lessened. I'm quite happy for a video game to make me feel a certain way, and there shouldn't be any shame in that. I bawled my eyes out when playing through the MSQ of Final Fantasy XIV, and I loved it. I even shed a tear during the ending of Season 1 of Telltale's Walking Dead. I think being made to feel a certain way from a video game is such a profound and powerful thing, and I'm interested in seeing more of that, if executed well. I'd just like to say that I think it's important to preach the message that you should play the games you enjoy, and if you don't enjoy them, don't play them. I know the story isn't everyone's cup of tea, especially World of Warcraft in recent years, and I understand it isn't the main motivation for a lot of players, and by no means is it the focus of the game. Regardless of the focus of Endgame, World of Warcraft isn't solely Dragonflight. It's a franchise, a game series that's been telling stories in the same universe long before the MMO. And this isn't me complaining about the game, but hoping Blizzard could utilise the resources they've been building for decades to create something great again. Let's go back in time to 2002-2003, Warcraft 3, in a bid to paint a picture and illustrate how Warcraft has changed over time. Warcraft 3 was my first step into the Warcraft universe, and whilst RTS games aren't my thing, I immediately felt taken in with the storyline, my favourite characters being Arthas, Uther and Kael'thas. I loved Arthas and Uther so much that Paladin was a no-brainer for me when stepping into WoW. These characters were interesting, well-written and badass, and badass is the key word here. Warcraft 3's storytelling and vision was simple and easy, and that's why it worked so well. Motivations became clear quite early, and the storyline was coherent and it made sense. How times have changed. In Warcraft 3, we'll follow various storylines across the different race campaigns, but the ones that have the most significance and stand out in a lot of people's minds will be the human and undead campaigns that feature the already mentioned Arthas Menethil. I'm not going to sit here and tell you the entire story of Arthas or the Lich King, but it's important to summarise his actions and events in Warcraft 3, so this can make more sense later. So when people talk about Warcraft, they're talking about Arthas culling an entire city, returning to Lordaeron and impaling his father, killing his mentor, the epic duel between Arthas and Illidan at Icecrown, watching Archimonde destroy Dalaran, Grom Hellscream and Manoroth! These are some of the scenes and moments as to why people fell in love with this franchise. Let's fast forward to World of Warcraft, Vanilla WoW before the game had an objective narrative like it does now. Many people often ask the question, what was the story of Vanilla WoW? I often feel like there really wasn't one. Stories obviously existed within the game, but we didn't have a campaign or a path like we do in the modern game. My feelings were that we were the storytellers of Vanilla. Whether you were a well-known blacksmith who forged armour and weapons, an adventurer exploring the dead mines for the first time, perhaps you were the champion of the Gurubashi Arena, or a warrior would have to tell the tale of the battle between South Shore and Taran Mill. Our memories and experiences were the story of Vanilla WoW, and yours could be totally different from mine, and I think that's great. Vanilla WoW wasn't just a game you played, it was a world you lived in. Skip ahead to the Burning Crusade, where we finally go through the Dark Portal and head into Outland, a place we haven't seen since Warcraft 3. We've all seen the epic Illidan Stormrage trailer, and by god, we are prepared. TBC wasn't exactly a storytelling masterpiece, it actually doesn't feature a single cutscene. For me personally, it was just a better version of Vanilla, and if you played Warcraft 3, you were familiar with villains such as Lady Vash, Kael'thas, and of course, Illidan. 
This video is mainly regarding the identity from a narrative perspective, but some players would critique the Burning Crusade as the first moment World of Warcraft lost a part of its identity from a gameplay perspective, with the introduction of flying mounts. Players still to this day believe that flying mounts are responsible for the death of World PvP. Let your mind wander a bit further, into Northrend. In a lot of players' opinions, the jewel in the crown. I think in terms of hype, most people would say Wrath was the pinnacle. Players were always curious if and when Arthas would ever make an appearance in the MMORPG, but I have to acknowledge Worlds of Draenor because the hype for that expansion was actually insane. I think people sleep on that a bit, and regardless of what you thought of Warlords, the hype and potential of that expansion cannot be ignored. Anyway, the importance of Wrath of the Lich King and what makes it so different from something like Dragonflight isn't just the fact that it's the Lich King, but it was the way the story was conveyed and shown to us. This often sparks a show-don't-tell debate regarding the modern game and its storytelling. Wrath of the Lich King was when storytelling began to have more of a focus within the game, and whilst I would have loved to have had a fully-fledged TBC story, this was still a great place to start. This was always going to be an epic experience, from the legendary Wrathgate cinematic, to Varian and Garrosh coming to blows in Dalaran, to the brilliantly done finale in Ice Crown Citadel. These cutscenes were glorious, conflict was a constant, and I was very excited for what was to come. Regardless of people's opinions of Cataclysm, Mists of Pandaria, and Warlords of Draenor, I feel that like the cinematics were still of a very high standard for their time, and showcased both conflict and excitement, which was the familiar tone we were used to in Warcraft. It's important to remember that we aren't critiquing the overall story here of modern day World of Warcraft, so to speak. We're talking more about pockets of dialogue and certain actions, or lack of, of the characters, rather than the narrative as a whole. An example of cinematics or storytelling that has more of a Warcraft feel, to me, would be the famous You Were Dismissed Garrosh questline in Stone Talon Mountains. I think another slept on cinematic is in Mists of Pandaria, when Taranzu mocks Garrosh about his father's death. And of course, the ending of Mists, with Jaina telling Varian to seize this moment and to dismantle the Horde. Now, we could continue to flirt with this road of nostalgia. I could go on to talk about Warlords, the Black Hand Iron Dock cinematic, or the showdown between Garrosh and Thrall and Legion, which in my opinion is the best expansion WoW ever did. If we continue this trip down memory lane, we're never going to get to the point, and that point is, the storytelling in WoW has dramatically shifted and is a husk in comparison to what it once was. Some see Dragonflight as a step in the right direction, considering how poor Shadowlands was, but it feels like WoW has lost its soul and identity, what made it so special for so long. The heart of Warcraft still beats, but in a different rhythm now. We have to ask the question, when did this start happening? When did WoW really lose this feeling of epicness and glory? When you think of Warcraft, what's the first thing that comes to mind? For me, it's the factions and the races. I think Battle for Azeroth tried really hard to capture lightning in a bottle and replicate the feelings players were so in love with. It came across very forced and was designed to hammer home feelings of old. We're returning to the faction war and all that stuff. I remember being hugely impressed with the cinematic at the time. BFA's issues were its pacing and attempting to tell different stories all at once. That being said, I think the cinematics in BFA are stellar. All Soldier is brilliant, and I love the mock garage with Saurfang and Sylvanas. So I have to ask this question again, when did this start happening? The ending of BFA didn't exactly set the world on fire, as people often refer to it as a complete copy of Lord of the Rings, as well as watching a big eyeball close in a collapsing wall. It felt like a really disappointing but not surprising end for BFA. I feel like Blizzard had potential to produce these epic and fulfilling moments, but Nazoth will go down as one of the biggest disappointments in World of Warcraft history. I think something that was damaging, certainly for me, was the abolishment of the Alliance vs Horde, or at least how watered down it all is now. It obviously still exists with war mode and so on, but the landscape of the factions has been changed forever now. There will always be conflict, and some wounds are never going to heal. But I feel what made WoW so unique and set it apart from any other MMORPG was the divide between the Alliance and the Horde. And it still exists, but it can't ever be the same again. There's no going back after something like cross-faction guilds, and honestly, I don't think we should. It's not the end of the world, but it felt like a part of WoW died, at least for me. I still get surprised when I jump into a dungeon and my tank is a Torrent or an Orc, for example. I don't know if that's something I'll ever get used to. I understand why this change was made, Servers are often landslides when it comes to balance, and as somebody who played on Alliance at Shattered Hand EU from 2005 to 2016, shout out to Everlasted, Order of the Hammer, and Skull Squadron, 
I watched a thriving alliance server be ground to dust. To the point where my guild got the second place alliance kill on Deathwing Heroic. And we were terrible. I eventually moved to Sylvanas EU, which was more alliance favoured, and now reside on Ravencrest, which is more of the same. I guess I'm just sad that Blizzard didn't do anything in an attempt to balance factions sooner, so this felt like the silver bullet. And in a way, it makes sense. The Alliance and Horde always tend to band together to take out the bigger threat, as we've seen for years now. It just really felt like Blizzard ripped away such a core part of the game's identity. It's interesting in Season of Discovery that factions are locked on some servers until the other faction catches up, which seems like a good attempt from Blizzard, but it also feels bad if you're late to Season of Discovery and all your friends are on a faction that's now locked. Or worse, your friends are all on Living Flame EU, which is just locked entirely. Class fantasy may also be a reason some players feel that World of Warcraft has lost its identity a little. For example, if you're playing Alliance in Classic and you want to play a Hunter, the choices are Dwarf and Night Elf. Back in the day, it felt all races served a purpose, as they were locked to certain classes. I oddly miss this personally, but understand that accessibility was absolutely needed. It always seemed so weird that you couldn't be a human Hunter, for example. We're at a point now where it doesn't make sense to gatekeep classes behind certain races, except in rare cases like the Demon Hunter. A while ago, classes Rogue, Mage and Priest were made accessible to all races, and I feel this will only happen more and more as the game goes on, which I must stress I think is a good thing at this point. Players have often been critical with identity regarding the classes too, as they feel lost or an afterthought these days. Most classes just build and spend, and are a lot more accessible now. For example, most, if not all, classes have a speed boost and a self-heal. Players had also been critical of the talent system in World of Warcraft since the rework in Mr. Pandaria. I think Blizzard have finally got it right with Dragonflight, and I'm excited to see them expand on that with the War Within. A personal criticism for me with the races is that they're often played and dictated by their racials, rather than people having a genuine love, attachment or interest in that race. I understand this is what makes the races unique, but it always felt a bit disappointing to me. A hot take no doubt, but I felt that racial should have been removed long ago, so people could just play whatever race they wanted to without fear of being penalised, but I digress. Narratively, all the races feel the same now, and there doesn't seem to be any real difference with their background, culture or theme. I think Dragonflight was Blizzard attempting to craft a new storyline, which they have done, but it's not without its problems. The story of Dragonflight was about bringing the aspects back into the fold, a quest to reobtain their powers. At the end of Cataclysm, it was announced that this was now the Age of Mortals. Will anything actually change going forward now the Dragon Aspects have their powers restored? We don't even know exactly what their Aspectral powers are or what they even do. Their eyes glowed for a bit, then they didn't, and now they do again. A big criticism of Dragonflight is that Blizzard are telling a storyline about dragons, which has a lot of people excited, but they've just made them so incredibly boring. The final cinematic in the Amidrasil raid did not go over very well either. There are so many questionable things regarding this cinematic. Why didn't we see Farak after defeating him? What exactly are the Dragon Aspect's powers? Why are they finishing each other's sentences? And who on earth let Caligos binge watch The Fast and the Furious? I don't have friends. I got family. The only way to sum it up by the player base was cringe. Prior to this cinematic, we saw another with both Farak and Alexstrasza. Farak was poised to kill Alexstrasza until everybody and their mother showed up. From Thrall to Velen to Khadgar, the boys were back in town. I'm not gonna lie, I had no issue with this. I'm all for an Avengers Assemble moment in World of Warcraft. I often wondered why we hadn't seen something like this sooner. My issue is the terrible dialogue and just general direction of it all. I think this was a great idea on paper, but I watched it through gritted teeth. Another example of poor dialogue in my opinion is Rathian, particularly in Zaralek Caverns. It felt like whoever had written his lines had no experience with who he is. He came across as bratty and petulant, and it felt as though this was his entire personality now, as opposed to what we've seen of him in the past. He always had that playfulness and charm about him, but his appeal diminished rapidly for me in Dragonflight. I'm curious how involved the aspects will even be after this expansion. I think a problem Blizzard fell victim to as expansions went on was upping the stakes too much too fast. There always had to be a new world ending threat or something equally as sinister. So when the pendulum decided to swing the other way with Dragonflight, some people just didn't care for it that much. They felt the story was boring, there wasn't enough action and it was too relaxed. I feel Blizzard would put in a lose-lose situation here, people would have been critical regardless. 
I'm not campaigning for war purely for the sake of war. I want to see conflict that brings tension and in turn brings stakes into a story. As much as happy stories and endings are also needed and rightfully have their place, too much of it is just lame. There's a reason why newspapers and media who only chose to print happy news got shut down fast. It's not entertaining. Conflict is needed. It's the force that drives characters to do things. Dealing with difficult scenarios and pressure tends to show who people really are, and sometimes can yield surprising results. A major critique of Dragonflight is the whole show-don't-tell technique I mentioned earlier that Blizzard have struggled with for the longest time. I mentioned in my previous video, which you can watch here by the way, that some of Warcraft's lore is contained through comics and novels, but sometimes they're just outright terrible when it comes to the storytelling in the game. A good example of this would be in Dragonflight, when Viranoth decides to switch sides and now work with the dragon aspect. Despite 20,000 years of bitterness, rage and resentment, her and Alex Straza were all made up and totally fine pretty much instantly, and all we saw as players was one single cutscene to document this. We never saw any of the aftermath, we never saw any further conversations between the characters. Too much stuff happens in the game and our characters never get to witness it. I feel that Blizzard could have the best script and plan in the world, but the execution is always their Achilles heel, and if they're determined to craft a more story driven experience in the World Soul Saga, then they must drastically improve. In the raid ending cinematic, it's talked about how this is all about coming together as a family. What did they actually do together? Half of the time, they aren't even interacting with each other as they're all sectioned off into their own zones. Has Abyssian even spoken to half of them? I could go on with asking the question as to why they brought Yazera back, because she didn't play much of a role in Dragonflight, but you've likely already heard somebody else complaining about that already. You get the point. Dragonflight was capable of telling a great story and the concept of it all is fine, but the story was mainly told and not shown. It's not that the concept has failed, it's once again poor delivery and execution. It's a very conflicting thought knowing that the World Soul Saga will be more story driven. I'm excited for it, but at the same time, Blizzard have dropped the ball frequently with storytelling. I think the Blue Dragon aspect storyline in Dragonflight should serve as the benchmark going forward, because it really was brilliant and the only time I truly felt invested in the story. These days, people are referring to WoW as World of Disneycraft, World of Friendcraft, World of Friendship, and World of Wokecraft. Maybe they'll start calling it Pal World next. I don't think Blizzard's ideas are terrible, but I do think their writers need to step it up, especially as far as character dialogue is concerned, as I mentioned before. It's on par with George Lucas's dialogue in Star Wars. I absolutely love Star Wars, by the way. Ironic. It's banal, stilted, and laughable at times. It just comes across very amateur. In regard to Dragonflight's more emotional cutscenes, do I think that Blizzard are attempting to emulate Final Fantasy XIV by trying to be more emotive? Maybe a little, but this is Blizzard in a nutshell. The lifeblood of World of Warcraft originally was taken from other games. Blizzard have always been at their best when they've taken ideas because they usually enhance them. I'm not saying that emotional cutscenes only have a place in Final Fantasy XIV. God forbid they showcase them in World of Warcraft, but I think it's an important question to ask. Why are we only seeing these kind of cutscenes now? Again, I have no issue with them. I'm more than happy to cry my eyes out in WoW too, but it has to be meaningful and done correctly. It's good to have these epic moments in battle, but then serious and tender moments too. Granted, not everybody's going to like them, but if they serve a purpose to the story, then I'm all for it. It's important that a balance is maintained though, and I think this is why players have revolted in Dragonflight. Players want a little less conversation and a little more action, and Dragonflight hasn't offered this. Some people were quite critical, almost embarrassed, of the cutscene with Chromie hugging Nosdormu in Dragonflight. I didn't have a huge problem with it, I just think players aren't used to seeing that sort of affection in the game, because it never really existed in the past. The same could be applied to the kiss scene with Malfurion and Tyrande in 10.2.5, which I think was a risk, but a big win for WoW personally. If we're going to show emotion, then let's go all in on it. If we can see these kind of things in other games or TV and film, why not World of Warcraft? However, players are used to the aforementioned conflict and war and seeing somebody's head on a pike. And this isn't a campaign to make me great again, or macho, or anything like that, because I'd really like to see more emotionally charged moments in World of Warcraft, but I think there can be a better way of delivering them. When Arthas died at the end of Wrath, we all felt something. Maybe it was sadness, maybe some were happy to put him out of his misery and finally end his reign, or maybe you're buzzing because you won Invincible, you lucky son of a... But we all felt something. And that's great. Enjoying moments together and having things in common make our experiences so much better. 
The elephant in the room for a lot of the changes we've seen in the game, narratively or otherwise, was the Activision Blizzard lawsuit. And maybe this is our answer. Maybe this is when it started happening. I'm not going to get into the lawsuit, but we obviously saw a lot of significant changes during that period of time. NPCs were either name changed or removed entirely, rightfully so. We also saw both flirting and jokes that have been in the game since WoW's inception removed. Why does everyone automatically assume I know tailoring and cooking? I like to fart in the tub. Oh, I'm having a wardrobe malfunction. Oh, there's me hammer. No, they're not real, but thanks for noticing. It's like my father always used to say, shut up and get out. Oh, I'm dancing again. <laughs> I hope all your friends are enjoying the show. I'd like to give a shout out to my boys in Nomregon. Keeping it real, Big T, Snoop Pup, and Little D's. Y'all are short, but you're real, baby. Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? Along with innuendos like the Lovers in the Air Mount Big Love Rocket being renamed to the X-45 Heartbreaker. Or daily quests from Raph the Lich King with the Sons of Hodia blowing Hodia's horn, polishing the helm, and thrusting Hodia's spear were renamed to Hodia's Call, the Viscous Cleaning, and How to Slay Your Dragon respectively. This dynamic of Blizzard looking to clean up their act continued, as female NPC models were also adjusted accordingly. For example, in the past, both Alex Strasser and Vanessa Van Cleef's character models wore revealing clothing. You can imagine the outburst those changes caused. As well as paintings in houses and buildings that showed women in any sort of suggestive fashion, or even the slightest bit of cleavage were also adjusted, or replaced, with what is now a titan in the Warcraft universe. That's right. You already know what it is. It's the fruit. Whilst the latter was seen as a meme and genuinely quite funny, there was uproar when Blizzard continued doing the rounds, removing both the slash spit emote when targeting players and the voice line of Garrosh calling Sylvanas a bitch during the Silverpine Forest storyline. Isn't it obvious, Warchief? I serve the Horde. Watch your clever mouth, bitch! Some players felt Blizzard were taking this to extreme levels, and felt executives were ruining the game's integrity. So if we've now solved our when question, allow me to ask you another. This time, who? With such radical changes in tone in regards to the storyline, with many calling it fan fiction and a story for children, just who is Blizzard's target audience? I think this is probably one of the biggest reasons why many have left Retail WoW, coupled with a long list of endless chores from past expansions. These players now take solace in classic World of Warcraft, or have simply moved on and left it all behind entirely, because they no longer recognise it. It's not because Retail WoW is a bad game, because that's not true, but I think this is such an important question to ponder. People were obviously frustrated and upset with both BFA and Shadowlands, and Blizzard are doing their best to continue to right those wrongs. I think some players feel they've been hurt too many times before, from the narrative to the systems. It's just too little too late, and for what they have seen in Dragonflight, it doesn't interest them because the story is a far cry from what it once was. Something Blizzard are very good at is stoking the nostalgia fires in an attempt to bring players home, and we heard Chris Metzen say himself at BlizzCon that it was time for players to come home, but to many, the game just isn't WoW anymore. Blizzard's storytelling at this point is puzzling, and surely they never anticipated it going on for this long. It began contained, small, and centralised, but has grown and split off into so many different directions. Marry that with changes in creative, the pressure and expectations from Activision, Blizzard's audience changing and evolving, and the lack of respect for the material at times. Now adding Microsoft into the mix, Chris Metzen and the rest of the team have a job on their hands. So what are your thoughts? There's obviously a lot of questions here, and there's so much to unpack. Has World of Warcraft lost its identity? Do you think they need to put the war back into Warcraft? Has World of Warcraft strayed too far from its roots? Or are you happy with its current storytelling and excited for the future? Did flying mounts kill world PvP? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who engaged with my first video, subscribed and supported the channel. I can't explain to you how overwhelming something like that was for me and I'm so very grateful for your kind words and your support. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it didn't rub anybody up the wrong way or cause upset, as that was never my intention. Not all of this is my opinion, and I think I've been clear on the part where I speak as a fan. Thank you so much for watching, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.